Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. You know, recently I watched one of my original videos, uh, goes back to when the channel started and actually kind of what got my channel started because of the views. And in that I kind of introduced a technique which I think I was the first to come up with to create a mask in Photoshop or at least a pseudo mask by using the adjustment brush along with the auto mask feature. And you could create some pretty nice selections of that. And I wonder now with all of the masking tools that we have, if that's kind of been outdated. Now, my conclusion is it isn't, it's still very useful. Now, sometimes there are now other tools that are better, but in some cases it's really quite a useful tool. So I thought maybe a refresher video on that because I know a lot of people haven't seen it. It's a super effective tool for certain things. Let me first kind of go through that original video's image and kind of show what I did real quickly. And then let's take a couple of new images and just see uh, how I can use it even with some of the other masking options and why things like point color and create mask by color range still aren't maybe as good as just using a brush to create a mask. So in that video, I showed how to use the brush tool with auto mask to create pretty intricate masks based on color range and density. It was pretty narrow in its selection, and, but you could simply build on it by clicking in different points to the image. Here you can see that I'm pretty well able to isolate the yellows in the image. Now I can bring their brightness up a little bit and maybe add a little bit of saturation. Then I can turn around and make another brush and I can find all of the greens. In this case, I want to find the medium green tones, not any of the real dark greens. And I just click different points to the image to get those tones and even over here in the upper point I miss some so now I can bring the luminance down and the saturation of the greens a little bit now I can add even another brush and in this case I can find these tree trunks pretty easily just by starting to click different points to the trunks and I can find all of these tree trunks and very quickly create a brush or a mask that's pretty exclusive to just the tree trunks. And then here again, I can take and maybe lighten up those tree trunks just a little bit. And let's real quick go to lights out and then just go back and forth. So in about a dozen clicks or so, uh, it didn't take me very long. I was able to go from this look here to this look here. Now I would put a lot more work into that, especially on the tree trunks. And just an example, and if you want to see, here's the actual final image that I was able to achieve by this technique, plus what I really like is the Orton Glow effect I added, which I did another video about, and I'll link it up in the corner. It's been quite popular. So let's see if there's ways to isolate this particular tree. I took this picture a long time ago and I really never got a file that I really liked. And I think part of the problem was that when I was there, this particular tree in front of me, which is a little bit of an unusual color for an aspen, was really jumping out at me and it seemed to have a lot more contrast in brightness. And that happens sometimes in evening light where the things you're close to just appear brighter and the camera doesn't quite see it that way. So what I have to do is isolate the leaves of this tree and then try to bring them up a little bit and then bring everything else down. Down. Now, of course, what I would typically do is bring everything down and then try to bring the tree back up. But I think with the current masking tools, there are some better options. Let's first try to use point color to select the leaves of the tree and see if we can bring them up a little bit. So the only way I've figured out how to use point color is by creating some kind of a brush and then using point color because point color is actually an adjustment that you can make within the masking tool, but you can actually create a mask with point color. Now, in some cases, point color is really powerful, although sometimes this brush technique is a little more. Now, what I've done here is I've isolated the tree with the brush and the limbs, and I've tried to find the color. And as you can see, it's done a fairly good job of picking up just the leaves. And of course, I could then clean up around the edges and maybe brighten that up a little bit. But I think the problem is there's no way that I can take this image and then select the background. I can't invert this mask because it's really not a mask. Point color is just an adjustment. So in this particular case, I don't think I would want to use it. I'd want to try something else. So one of the new tools that might be useful in this is select color range. And as you'll see, this is going to end up getting me into the same place as my brush tool, but it's a lot more convoluted and more involved. So if we create a mask based on color range and we click a color, we'll see that we can isolate fairly narrow ranges of color and that means we're going to have to build upon this easy to do we can just add another uh, selection to the mask by and click another color and we can gradually build up the color range selections based on colors even though they're not similar to each other for example let's grab these greens down in here and one more let's just grab some of these oranges that we missed over here now the problem is is that this color range isn't 
including just the area of the tree, and we have to get rid of what's around it. Now, we could just grab the brush and do a subtract brush and try to erase it, but that's actually not very effective because it's not as precise as we need it to be. We're trying to find just the leaves within the tree. A better way would be using the intersect ability and create an intersect brush. And here we'll just click in different areas of the tree. And as you can see, we're isolating the leaves and we're beginning to eliminate the background because only those areas that we intersect. The problem is, is that we can do this directly without all the convoluted steps of creating the range tool and it's actually more precise and we can see what we're doing better. Let's just create a mask using the brush tool itself and see how that works in this case. So let's create a mask using the brush tool. Let's make sure that feather is off and auto mask is on. That's kind of the key. Let's just start clicking in some of the colors and start building this brush mask. It's basically selecting a color range, very similar to the color range tools, but it's limited within the scope of the brush. Now, if we need to, we can zoom in so we can see the colors a little more precisely and we can build smaller sections. And with this technique, I'm able to really isolate the leaves of this tree, even though it's a background, and I'm able to build a pretty good mask that allows me to then correct all of the colors of the tree leaves uh, from the range of yellows to reds to greens. And once in a while we get a little bit that's outside, so we're gonna have to hit the option key or alt, and we're needing to erase some of that because it goes over. And as you can see in fairly short order, I was able to isolate the leaves of the tree and it's much more precise than anything else I've used. And this was the fastest way. Now I can add my adjustment, bring the exposure up a little and add a little saturation. And I was able to create a nice little isolation of the leaves of the tree. And if I invert this mask now, you can see what I've selected. And what's cool is once I've inverted it, I can apply a different correction to everything but my selection or leaves. So I'm able to drop that background down a little bit. Now I could also go in and add another brush and using the same technique, I could isolate the trunk of the tree and I'd have to do a little bit of work to be more precise than this. Just like with any masking technique, sometimes you've got to tweak it a little bit by hand, but fairly quickly I'm able to pull out these. And because my adjustment is going to be incredibly subtle, as long as I don't get outside of it too much to create a halo, it's not going to be noticeable even if I'm not super accurate. Let's go ahead and lighten up the brand, uh, trunk of the tree now, just add a little bit to it. And so in fairly short order, I've been able to isolate this tree from the background, even though there's not a lot of clear definition. And now the last thing I'm going to do real quick, let's add a little bit of a corner vignette to kind of pull our eye into the middle a little more. Now let's take a quick look at the before and then this is the after version. And as you can see, it's pretty subtle in what I did, and yet the end result is fairly dramatic. And I really like how this turned out after I think I took this picture 13 years ago. Real quick, let me show one other example. This is a Japanese maple located in Portland. And when I was shooting this picture, the red seemed to glow a little more than it ended the end result. And this was a little more orange. If I correct the orange and the greens, kind of, I kind of lose the right color. So what I want to do is try to isolate just the highlights of this tree and just bring them out a tiny, tiny bit. So again, let's create a mask using the brush. We won't mess around with the other techniques. We're going to make a pretty big brush, auto mask on, feathers off. Just clicking different colors. Now, there's quite a variety of colors here, and they're mostly luminance, a lot of brightness values. And we want to catch all of the highlights. This time, we don't want the darker leaves uh, because we're isolating just the highlights because that's really what was sort of glowing when I was there. Now, we're going to bring up the exposure a tiny bit. We're going to add a little bit of saturation. And now, let's just make a slight hue adjustment to get it a little more red, which is kind of what I saw when I did this originally. And here's our before, and now the after. Let's do that one more time. Here's the before, very, very subtle. I'm not sure how well it shows on your screen. Here's the after, but it's a little more what I, was at, what I saw at the time of taking the photograph. Now I'm going to use this same technique to do one more thing. Let's add another brush. And this time we're going to click on this road back here. 
and we're going to try to isolate this pavement just so we can bring it down a little bit. Uh, several clicks here. Maybe zoom in so I can see what I'm doing a little better. Sorry, I hope that didn't make you dizzy. It's weird sometimes when you zoom in, you lose your brush and you have to go back in and out. Let's go ahead and click here, get some of these. And over here in the middle. And maybe try to pick up some of these here in this little area here. Now I need to erase some of these that I've got up above. And we're just going to get a fairly good brush and brush them out. Now, one problem I have that this area down here is a little too harsh. So I'm actually going to get my erase tool and add a fairly big feather and just kind of smooth that out so it's a little more gradual. Now let's zoom back out and let's just tone that down a little bit with a slight exposure adjustment. Very subtle. But when we're all done, we have a really nice image and we're able to go from this to this as again very very subtle but to me it adds quite a bit to the impact and the beauty that I saw that day so what about the option of using point color on this well I can do the same thing I showed before I can create a brush and I can start picking colors within this expanding the range I found didn't help a lot because they're just two different point colors really good at finding very narrow ranges not quite as good but I can build on it quite easily the challenge is to really see the mask I'm building because it's not a true mask I have to drop down my saturation and change my luminance and that way I can kind of see a sort of an overlay because overlay is really not available with this once I do that my problem is I've got to go through and I've got to actually tweak each of these different hues and I've got to I can't sync them all up. I can't say apply the same correction to all five. At least I can't find a way to do that. End result is probably very similar to what I got with the brush tool, but it certainly took me a lot longer and I'm not sure it's quite as good. So what about using the color range choice like I showed her there? This actually wouldn't have been too bad of an option on this particular image and it might have been as good because the color range is a little bit broader in its selection and point color and it would only taken me about three or four clicks and I might even be able to tweak the the refine slider to get a little bit more and then I'm able to make the corrections I can add an erase brush to get rid of the areas outside and then I can make basically the same correction I made with the brush tool and I think I got pretty much near identical results but it was a little bit harder to do took me a little more time and really what I'm doing with this tool is I'm doing the exact same thing as the brush tool already does one thing about the brush tool and the algorithm Adobe uses is very unique I'm not sure how it works it's based on color and contrast and it's very good about finding edges of things much better than doing the same thing and for example capture one uh, I'm not sure if it's something they just lucked onto, but ever since the beginning, it's been an awesome tool to create a pseudo mask before this the version came out and now to create a genuine mask. It's pretty amazing. Well, there you have it. A lot of times the brush tool is still the best tool to create a mask, especially the advantage of the auto mask feature. Sometimes it works better to find a sky. Sometimes it can find an edge better than Adobe can or Lightroom can. Now that's not always the case and certainly I'm willing to try some of the other tools quite a bit, but it certainly should be something that you might want to experiment with and sometimes you might find it's the best tool, especially when you're trying to just do something really subtle and just bring up some highlights a little bit or bring down some small area that's pretty clearly defined. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know below. Appreciate any comments and if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. See ya.